special. I'm Mike Ward. You're hey, Pantelis. There we go. This is Poseidon. Yeah, right yep. there. The new Poseidon 2.0. The new Poseidon. Welcome to Two Drink Minimum. Very special episode. Mike is in France right now. Poseidon back in prison. So yeah. we're, we're doing Poseidon. it ourselves. Yeah. We have a lot to talk about, though. I was I was away. You were away. I was away. We were close and yet so far. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, we were. Yeah, it is. You were in Dallas. I was in Austin. Yeah, and then you you were also in um in San Antonio. I was in San Antonio. I've never yep. been. Yep, San Antonio. Seen the unsubscribe guys. Did a podcast. Did, did two podcasts actually, because I flew. I went from Austin, had a few days in the Bahamas, and then I jumped back down to Vegas for a day, and I got to see the unsubscribe guys. Did another podcast with them. I, in Vegas? In Vegas, yeah. They did like four. Those guys are huge, by the way. I want to meet them for yeah. gun-related purposes. They are like the king of like gun YouTube. You got Brandon Herrera, who does like AK stuff and like gun reviews. You have a donut operator who is top. He is uh, top 10 or top 20. I think he's 11 out of 20 most influential Twitter accounts. So he's he pops on Twitter. You want to brag? Did you know that uh, Mike Ward? I know. I heard this. Has sold already over fifty thousand tickets yeah. of his new tour. Yeah. Uh, the tour is, is, I think he start he's done a day <laughs> so That's, far. It's incredible. The tour's barely even started. He's already sold fifty thousand tickets. tickets. Dude. He got an award for that too. They presented him. Yeah, he got the gold ticket before yeah. he started the tour. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. guy. Normally it's like midway through your tour, halfway. So who gives that out? What is that? I guess because in, in Quebec they get together like the companies, the, the production houses that produce these shows and the theaters yeah. and the clubs. Uh, well, for him, it's just theaters. Yeah. And they tally the numbers of sales, and they're and like, they, holy shit. It's kind of like getting like a platinum like album it, award or like same, but going you gold. You get those later. Like yeah. he, he went gold before the album released. Right. And he's barely started. So that means that the 50 was already hit. The 100 is going to get easy. Yeah. And then it's after that, see if you could sell over 100. And this is just in Quebec. That's, that's what's crazy. I mean, well, it's not, it's probably like there's probably other people coming from outside buying it in, but I mean, that's literally only in French. Mm. That's only his French show. It's nuts. That's crazy. That is crazy. When I when I try to explain this, especially down in like Austin, I'm talking to comics and I'm I'm trying to hype up, you know, two drink minimum, trying to get people on board. And uh, you know, I'm like, do you guys know about Mike Ward? And some people are like, oh, you know, because he's in English, it's not really as prominent. And uh, and then when I tell them, I'm like, oh yeah, he sold out the Bell Center for a podcast. They go, yeah. what? <laughs> there are twenty one thousand seats. They're like, huh? Yeah. They have they have no like it's it's so insane to them because like twenty five. Yeah, that's something like Ro- that's, those are like Rogan numbers. Oh, no, no, twenty twenty five, new plan <laughs> yeah. from Mike. He that's said it last podcast. You were, it's the one that you weren't on. Yeah, last last week's episode. He said it. Twenty twenty five. Yeah. Bell Center. Yeah. Two nights, one night of podcast, one night of stand up. Let's go. That'd be insane. Yeah. Oh He's my gonna god. Do it. It's fucking Mike. He's gonna do it. I'm checking out his tour dates right now, and he sold out until like May. <laughs> it's so insane. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, Man, uh, we should we should we should give away like when when he gets back we should do, like a giveaway for like tickets or something for like on two drink. Yeah, you know, MikeWard.ca if you want to buy tickets. Uh, Pantelscomedy.com. Follow my stuff. Chris Ramsey, you are currently online. Yeah, I'm online, dude. Doing things online. Doing things at Area 52. I'm moving forward. Hey, can we talk? Since it's me and you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could talk aliens. Yeah, the hats are here. Listen, your friend Bob Lazar. Yeah, I don't believe him. Well, hey, I'll tell say you, what you can will. I tell you why? Yeah. I've been rewatching some of his interviews. Yes. I don't like that he suddenly gets headaches mm. when there's a serious question right. being yeah. asked. Oh, I'm sorry, I remember that. I have a headache. That was the that was the Rogan. That was the thing, one of yeah. the Rogans. Then I also saw that uh there was a time where he said I can't remember, I can't recall what I was doing. I can't recall where I worked at X time and then that time was like He's like, I worked at this place, but then you find out that when he was saying that, he was running a brothel yeah, at but the just, same time. Just because your wife, you know, says she has a headache when when you want to have sex, doesn't mean she doesn't want to have sex with you, right? But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, right? Why does so he just like, tell me the truth? Well, he's, he had a headache. That was the truth, maybe. It's like your wife. Maybe she actually really had a headache every my night. Had, my wife has <laughs> never had a headache. <laughs> maybe, she, maybe all these headaches have something in common. Maybe your wife worked at Area 51. <laughs> I hope so. But you don't find it suspicious that he's always like iffy. And- I, I, first of all, I think like all the accusations he's had on his character, because those those accusations I've heard, like the brothel stuff. He could no no no. I'm not accusing of his yeah. character. He's that doesn't bother me. But Consensual what I'm, what I'm, adults what I'm saying sex, is that all that stuff has nothing to do with his time. That's what I'm saying. Going. Yeah, so, I'm all for it. That so doesn't bother me. It's like it's like being like, yeah, how can we trust? Uh, 
Biden if he no, once no. smoked weed. No, no, you're misunderstanding me. What I'm saying is he said, I don't know. Uh, he, he said, for example, I was working at X place at that yeah. time. And then you find out he wasn't. And not only was he not, he was, he was making his money from the brothel. So there was... Uh, what I'm saying is he had a job. His job was brothel. It wasn't uh, investigating UFOs. No, definitely. He did, he did work at these places. And from speaking to sources, they tell me there is a credible reason why um, and how... His a lot of his records got sort of deleted. The gays? Um, no, <laughs> no, damn gays. Gay agenda. It's always the gays. Uh, no, it was obviously because he's working on a fucking secret, you know, government project, and they don't want that getting out. So there was a lot. At f- there was. But he's already talking shit. I don't understand. I'll give you. I'll give you the 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 nail in the coffin right here. Is that recently? Maybe you can pull this up if you can find it. But recently, uh, there was a scientific paper that came out. Proving uh, what Bob Lazar was saying. Bob Lazar said that they had to keep uh, the sort of gravitational propulsion engine at a certain frequency to be able to have it work. He had that number, that equation, that number. Well, only till recently have scientists done the math and have come to the same number that he said. Really? Which is like buying a lottery ticket. So... They, uh, in their study, and if you find this, in their study, it says this basically clears Bob Lazar of anything. Well, of anything, I wouldn't say. It clears him him of the brothel. No, it doesn't clear him. No, it doesn't. I I don't care about that. That, But it does does say that, that, look, the hand scanners, he said, beforehand. I'm from Montreal, bro. Brothels are part of life. That's right. The (laughs) Baudet. He said the hand scanners were true, right? We were like, that's bullshit. Sounds like science fiction. I mean, we have hand scanners now. No, the bone density scanners that he put his hands on. So oh. he said those, and we said no, and then they came out. Uh, element 115, he was talking about. We said no. Then we discovered element 115. Obviously not the same thing. We haven't stabilized it like like he uh, said it was. Um, and then what else? There was his his name at, I think, EG&G or like... It, there are people who can place Bob Lazar in... Um, in and around S4, there are people who said, yes, we've, we've seen Bob go to work. We've seen Bob do this. Like he was there. Uh, now we have to look at his story and if his stories never change over time. And the only thing that's happening is we're getting more and more information that's coming to light that matches up with what Bob was saying. Look at David Grush talking about reverse engineering craft and all this stuff. Like this is exactly what Bob was talking about. So a lot of what he's saying is a giant psyop. Uh, I I don't. Uh, that's something I'll never throw out. But why the psyop then, right? Yeah. Well, you're so, friends with Jeremy Corbel. Mm-hmm. Um, what does he say? How do you feel about him? Is he is he the enemy? Listen, it's I, I firmly believe that there are like a dozen people in the world that actually know what's going on. That's my firm belief. I firmly I firmly believe there's a very very small amount of people. The Illuminati. And uh, not even uh, deeper than that. I think it's people who are just uh, on either the contractor or military side. Jay-Z. Deep, 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 deep. And they really know what's going on. They're the ones who know the most. Now, I feel that even those people haven't put all the pieces together. So that's what I think. Uh, Everything in between, yes, could be hearsay, could be, is it true, is it not? But God damn it, it's so much fun to just look into it, isn't it? I'm having a blast. Because so, I, I tell people this. I tell people, if you want to look at Bob Lazar's story or or Travis Walton's story or any of these like amazing cases that were documented, Betty and Barney Hill, all this stuff, if you want to look at it and look at it as a fictional piece, it's still entertaining. So if you want to look at it as fic, uh, as fact, fiction, yeah. then obviously it'll change your, it'll rock your fucking universe. But if it's fiction, it's still a great story. Right? I'm only interested in one alien uh, enthusiast's story, and that's Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> and, He's not an alien, dude. And, he fights aliens, I think. That's what I'm saying. He fought. He fights them with guns. Yeah. I met. So I met this guy. That's what I'm saying. You yeah, met Kyle me Rittenhouse. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dude, I, so I'm hanging around with the unsub guys. Unsub guys are notorious gun guys, right? Yeah, Brandon Herrera, who's running for Congress. His whole slogan is "Make America Texas Again." Yeah, hilarious. Um, you got donut operator. You got fat electrician who does like military history, and then you got Eli Double Tap, and all these guys together have an incredible podcast and an amazing following. They go to a convention with twelve thousand, you know, gun toting Americans and Second Amendment dudes. USA, USA. Yeah, 
I'm having lunch with these guys. These guys are like superstars in this world, right? Celebrities. Sit down. I'm talking to this kid. And I'm like, I'm looking at him. And I'm like, ah, you were at the you were at the gun range, you were there, or something like there's I feel yeah. like I've seen this guy before. And he, you know, obviously probably gets that a lot. And they started calling him Kyle. And I was like, who's this kid that I've been talking to for like two hours? I'm not Brofflowski. And then I go, holy shit, it's Kyle Rittenhouse. <laughs> yeah, he, he gave me his business card. It was an AK. <laughs> Dude, he shot a known pedophile. He shot, yeah, he killed two people and then shot another guy in the bicep. But uh, the footage came out. You saw the footage. Yeah, I saw the footage. It, 100% self-defense. It's 100% self-defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I, I remember in the beginning, we yep. talked about it on Two Drink, I think. We talked about it on the Pantelis podcast. We are looking at yeah, the video. Yeah. I remember on the Pantelis podcast. There was a doubt was when like, the video didn't come out. Yeah. No, no, but there was a video where the guy, he points the gun at him. It's like, what do you think I'm going to do if I have a gun? Yeah. The second you point a gun at me. In a state where it's legal to carry. Off. I'm going to shoot your balls off, homeboy. Yeah. In Texas. And then you find out the guy yeah. was a pedophile on top of it? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I'll shoot fucking your dick off. I think he was just acting in self-defense, fell to the ground. But you, you saw that like he only shot bullets. As soon as people started backing up and stopped confronting him, It was there was nothing. He went straight to the police. So like you look at this. That's a responsible gun owner, and he's just a child. Now I have another. On, uh, honestly, yeah, for real. It it like compared. He showed more gun restraint in that cops. video than most cops. Yeah, yeah. And so you know that I, I'll just give you my quick take. Like cool. this kid, um, he's just a kid. He was twenty one uh, when I when I saw him. He was like seventeen when this happened. He was twenty one. He was drinking, hanging around people, and people just nonstop. Kyle, you're a hero. Let me get a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and like all over. And and he, you could tell he's like a little autistic. He's also, you know, probably uh, post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. And, you know, he's showing me pictures of his dogs. I'm showing a magic trick. He's just a kid. So I felt bad for him in the sense that like, man, this, this, this kid will never be an average person because of what happened to him. Neither will the victims of that pedophile he shot. <laughs> Neither, that's true. That's true. But it is it is wild. It was wild meeting him. It was a little surreal. But all in all, like I said, I mean, I can only judge him on so many men. He's a nice kid. Yeah, he's just a kid. I mean, I, remember, I saw kid, the video. Man. My issue was, why did they... I would not have let my 70-year-old son pack guns and go to a counter-protest or whatever. I would like, mm. stay the fuck home. So, that's just yeah. my thing. So, now, legally, he's allowed, right? It's a free country. That's the thing. That's the thing. I'm saying, as a parent, you, you, your kid can do a lot of stuff legally. Yeah, but just to watch out for them, you know, I'm like, yeah, maybe you shouldn't go there. Yeah, but if he's I'm, 17 or 18, what does that change? No, I'm just saying, I'm, yeah. I'm just saying, he he's not in the wrong. I'm saying, as a parent, yeah, I wouldn't have even put him at risk because one of those guys could have raped and killed him. Of course, I think, yeah, I think in well, that he, order, he, he, yeah. If you if your kid's being attacked by a pedophile, you definitely want him to have an uh, an AR, right? All around an AK. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You want him to have the biggest assault rifle in history. Um, so I I, I agree with that, but also like. That's the line, right? Where if you're in Texas and open carry is legal, so I'm allowed to legally walk around with an AK and 30 clips of 30 magazines on me dressed as a SWAT uniform. I'm allowed to walk around my block like that. I love Texas. Do you know what I mean? Like that's obviously it's going to invite something eventually at some type of riot or some. So it's just the way it is. Like if, if, if people don't agree with it, change the laws. But until the laws are changed, all that shit's legal. All that shit's, that's the way it is. That's How do you like the Second Texas? Amendment. I love it. Me too. I love Texas. I um, you know, I, I want to make Quebec Texas. <laughs> it's funny. Austin's making uh, Texas LA again. Was it uh, Wes said? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Uh, I keep hearing. I ha I keep hearing about Austin that it's um, th there's good stuff artistically. Yeah. But at the same time, just the way the the, the county, I guess, is or the city lit, whatever the, the people who are in charge there, they're making it very, very blue. In yeah. comparison to everything else in Texas? It's LA. Yeah. Part two. So there's a lot of homeless? Dude, yeah. Austin, shit ton of homeless. And when I was there, um, you know, Green came too, and there was uh it was like a cold front going through normally. They're like twenty degree weather. Oh, I know, dude. I was fucking freezing. And it was like minus eight. And so people were calling, they're like, yeah. How are you cold? You're from Canada. I was like, I'm freezing in Ca I'm freezing right fucking yeah. now. This is brutal. I don't want to be here right now. I, I used to love going out to Texas and I, I showed up again right when there's a cold front. Yeah, same. And we only stayed for the days it was cold. He loved it because he sweats a lot. And he was like, fucking nice. But uh, <laughs> I, I gave Bonesai some money because he's like, uh, Bonesai, the guy who makes the Kill Tony joke books. Oh, shit. Yeah, he's he's a friend of mine. Shout out Adrian. And uh, he uh, he was going around giving homeless people like uh, blankets, uh, sleeping bags, tents, socks. Like What a good dude. Because these guys are going to die. Like, Yeah, they're not expecting that. They have no protection against you know the uh, the weather. That's the thing the about elements. a lot of the homeless. 
They don't think ahead. Mm. Yeah. That's right. You should get a house, basically. Yeah. Organization yeah. isn't usually their thing. If they slept in a pile, I Next think. Next to Kyle. Uh, just, if they all slept in a pile naked, they, their body heat would probably. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a, that's my advice no. if you're homeless. No. Don't fall for the gay agenda. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Of, keep it straight. Just a bunch of naked dudes. Yeah, no. Keep it straight. But pile up, dude. Stay warm. It's not gay. It's safety. <laughs> 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 Fucking shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and uh, well, if you put your dick in another man, it will stay warm for longer. By the way, fun so, fact: we can clip that. We spoke about this last episode. Yeah. You weren't there. There's a show called Love on the Spectrum. I, I love that show. We talked about it last episode. I watched the latest. There's a new season of yeah, Love on the I'm Spectrum. Watching it right now. I just finished it. Nice. It's great. Yeah. There's a lot of autism and sex. Did yeah. you get to the sex part? I didn't get to the sex part yet. That's hilarious. You, you know the girl with the glasses the, yeah. that loves animation? Yeah. She wants to get laid. Oh, yeah. And she was horny in the first season. Oh, but now she just says, she's like, I want the D. Right. She oh, yeah. Reading, yeah. She starts <laughs> reading sex books and she goes, what? You think girls don't get horny? And then she's, <laughs> try, that? she's trying to get this guy, this autistic guy to have sex with her. And her, her mom's like, you should ask him if uh, he's down with it because he's Catholic. Right. And then she's like, that's not going to be a problem. And like, you should ask. So then the table is like, how do you feel about sex before marriage? He's like, I um. I'm against it. Yeah. And then she's like, you know, you don't have to be against it. Like, you could do whatever you want. Like, I'm willing to do it with you if you're not against sex before marriage. And then he's like, you flip flop. I'm willing to give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and I was yeah, like, his, yo. His autistic brain just solved the Rubik's Cube in his head. He's like, yeah, we'll, we'll sex. Yeah, yeah we're going to make some sex. <laughs> no, yeah. they didn't bring her back. Good. She, she's a Yeah, she's no, her, her, yeah. yeah her, the her animation original. girl. So first season, she was horny as fuck, though. First season, she was making out with a dude. Yeah. Like, their whole date was just making out. She's like, I'm in love and we're going to get married. And Same. she got. And now it was like, I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to chill. But now you're telling me. Oh, now she's, she she's, wants to D. She, bro, if you could take a dick and shove it inside her, she'll take it. She's she's down. A lot of, a lot of non-autistic guys are probably Dude, uh, there's, there's, they keep dating people who are non-autistic. And it, you know, you saw the old guy in San Francisco, the really rich guy with the yeah. voice. Some Israeli Mossad agent goes on a date with him and she's super sexual and he's super uncomfortable. He's yeah. like, we can... We can go somewhere together. You can you can explore me and shit like that. And he's like, what do you do? She's you like, I sell cloud, military equipment. Chasing? Yeah. Fuck. I share, she goes, I sell military equipment to the Israeli Defense Force. I'm like, yo, there's a Mossad bro trying to bang this super rich guy? <laughs> God damn. That's crazy. They're going to yeah. send him over there to like defeat Hamas. That'd be amazing. It's crazy. <laughs> it's fucking insane. She's super, she has a huge fake tits and she's super sexual with him. Jeez. And he got uncomfortable. He doesn't want to see her again. Because she's too uh, too straightforward. Too straightforward. He's like, I've never held a hand, and you're trying to suck my dick four minutes after we meet. Yeah, yeah, it's suspicious. You monster. Yeah. Uh, there was the guy with the long hair, funny looking guy. Yeah, he looks he's like my cousin. I have a cousin like, who's just like him. Yeah, like, yeah. And he's he goes poker face. Like, so funny. Uh, he his Instagram I've been following. Me too. I have him on TikTok. Also. Yeah, he's blowing up because yeah. he's like, well, it looks like I'm gonna stay with my, I'm gonna live with my parents forever, and looks seems that way, and um, uh, I'm looking for the right one to just. Mm, he's got mm, swords, and and yeah, he's just, and all the comments are like. Like fucking, let's go, buddy. You got this. Like we're fucking, we're rooting for you. Very it's supportive. so supportive. Yeah, I love it. This there guy, is. that's my boy. This guy's a G, dude. This fucking guy has so many swords. They keep giving autistic people swords, dude. America's they a great love place. Swords, yeah. That's one step away from an Uzi, dude. I, you know why? You know why I fucking love America. It's like a taste of freedom. Like, like you. There, there's only one place in the world. Where you can drive down the road and see billboards that people are like, fucking, are you thinking about getting injured? Fucking call four 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 four. And you're like, oh, call the fucking the legal assassin and fucking are you sleeping in a hotel bed tonight and get bed bugs? Call the fucking the legal sniper. And it's like fucking three, 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 three. They got all the cool numbers. Yeah. And then there's like a trans person doing donuts in a parking lot. It's a fucking the Thunderdome, dude. Dude, it's America's crazy. Yeah. In a good way. It's, it's, I go there to like fucking taste the rainbow. Yeah. In, in no, uh, you know, the Skittles reference, not the, yeah, you know what? It's America, dude. You do what you want. You could do gay shit here too, though. That's true. We're in the gayest city in North America. Yeah. Look at our prime minister. Yeah. Goddamn right. That was my yeah. joke when I was down there. Yeah. Uh, that's how I broke the ice. So you broke the ice. You're like, Trudeau's gay. Everybody's like, woo. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's how I won them over. <laughs> nice. <laughs> For real. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's some people that at first, like, who's this guy from Canada? Yeah. And then as soon as I, I opened with like a Trudeau joke, and they're like, ah, this guy's one of us. Yeah, <laughs> one of them. <laughs> I was like, ah, this is good. This is fucking happening. They, yeah, they hate, uh, they love Canada. Yeah, but they uh, hate Trudeau. They hate Trudeau. Nice. Yeah. So if you denounce Trudeau, 
Yeah, which I get it because they they love Canada as do we. Yeah, but they they also love freedom as do we. Yeah, your Trudeau's getting mopped like up this week with yeah. the the federal judge ruling that the Emergencies Act was unnecessary and he infringed on our rights. Yeah, uh, he's getting sued, right? Yeah, the way he was clapping at that ladies hockey game. Yeah, you saw that? No. Oh, dude, he Pull went full retard. Put put yeah. Uh, gay PM clapping. See if that. Oh, it'll find him. Yeah, dude, he went full. I can't even see this. Dude, full retard. While everyone else was at the UFC event, because he didn't go, he a few days later he went to see ladies oh, play that, hockey. Look at the woman next to him like getting that? shocked. Look at the woman next to him. She's like, "Why?" Who claps like that, dude? What the hell? Look at the woman next to him. Like, yo, get the fuck out of here, dog. <laughs> oh my god, it's crazy. What a fucking buffoon. He, yeah, he's like buffoon a buffoon is the best way to yeah. He's like a bot. Yeah, he's a buffoon. He's a fucking bot, dude. Look at yeah, him. Yeah, Who claps like that? Yes, I'm hockeying. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, him. Ottawa. <laughs> he knew. So that was the moment he saw himself on camera. He speeds up. You see that? Like no camera. Oh, camera, 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 camera. But no one class. Why would you want that on camera? You look insane. Because he's like, he wants to double down. Look, I love hockey. I'm a man of the people. He probably, bro, he's probably, he looked, he's probably pissing himself right now. Just shitting himself. Bro, he looks like he loves giant swords. Who's that? Is that his son? No, no. His son went to the UFC event. The guy turning there now? No, that's just the two people next to him. Oh, <laughs> look at the next video. It's like fucking, oh, I thought that was like Andrew Tate's brother. It's a hockey player. It does look like Andrew Tate. <laughs> yeah, it does look like Andrew Tate's brother. What, Tristan? Yeah, whatever. That name's gay too. Those guys I'd are... I'd change my name if I were him. Trying to be a top G, dude. You can't be named Tristan. Tristan. Ugh. There's a Tristan Thompson. Tristan, if you collect crystals and fucking read your horoscope. Are you friends with the Andrew Tate and his brother? No. You never met him? No. I don't really give a shit about those guys i think you'd make good friends with them no i i uh i don't like how far they go to be to be what's the what's the far thing that they that they didn't i i don't like that i don't, I don't know much i only yeah. know what i see like i only the, know their, their whole uh, i don't like their whole controlling nature about relationships that what, what do they say me. about relationships i never heard them talk about relationships oh they especially andrew tate always talks about how like uh you know you should He's like, a uh, woman should be faithful, should have one partner forever. You should never get divorced. Like this whole like religious sort of like, it's really? weird. It's weird. Isn't he Muslim now? Is that why? I guess so. Yeah. That would make sense. But like for me, it's like, d- stop telling people what to do. Yeah. You know? And I'm just, with like, you. to be extreme yeah. too. He's always like, you're allowed to tell your wife what to do. But then in parentheses after it's like, well, it's just to keep her safe and blah, blah, blah. He's like really clicked yeah. with his, what oh, he says. You know? so he's it's like, all business. I get. You tell your wife to get in the kitchen yeah. right now. And then it comes to me. He's like, because there's a fire in the rest of the house. You want to protect her. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, I love yeah, that. That's yeah. a good, that's yeah. a good jokester. It, that's right. He's got a good I pull setup. that kind of shit too. But the, the problem is, is that like, he doesn't realize, like he thinks his followers are our age. Oh, like they, they get it. He thinks they're us. Right, so he's like, "Fucking yeah, I'm right." Smoking cigars, then he goes for a meet and greet, and it's just eleven year olds. Oh, he's like, "I didn't." And think. then his face changes. He's like, "Oh fuck, what have I done?" Like, it's, it's insane. Why are my fans so sexy? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why are they dumb and sexy? <laughs> Could you imagine that's what we find out about him? He's banging kids. Yeah. That's his big thing. Yeah, well, he was in trouble for human trafficking. No, that didn't, never happened. He's still in trouble for it. Well, he got in trouble. He was in jail for it, and then they let him out. Yeah. And then, you know, I always wondered that. So let's say you're, you're in jail, wrongfully accused. Yeah. But for a long period of time, like a year. And then they let you out. You can't get that year back. You sued you him. Lost, yeah, but you but he has money. Yeah. He's never, like, you lost a year of your life. Yeah. But That's gained, fucking gained crazy. a bunch of followers on Twitter, so I think a lot of people today would take that trade. Like, if, you don't, if you're not a multimillionaire, okay, you're going to make some money and you're going to live differently. But if you already have all the money, hmm. that's such a wrench in your... They just True. stole a year. You're never going to get that back. Yeah, yeah, unless you're like had a machine of some sort. you know, That could help you jump through time. Yeah, that could like give you that you so those I, years back. I saw a scientist who said that that's possible, but I don't believe them. Say that we can go through time right now. We can was go, it Alex Jones? We can go to the future. No, it was one of these fucking nerd scientists. But I don't think we can go to the future. I mean, we're always getting towards the future. But actual time travel, I feel like they're exaggerating. I don't think time travel is possible. Thank you. Um, I will tell you what I think is possible. I think we can shift into parallel dimensions, which there are an infinity of. So here's what I think you can do. Let's say you take a picture of yourself now, right? Go back in time 30 years, take a picture, find, find you, little you, take a picture of yourself. 
and then take a picture of you and your little self. Okay. I think you'll have three pictures. You'll have the picture of you young, the picture of you two together, and the picture of you old. I don't think you'll appear in the picture uh, of you young old. Like I don't, I don't think you'll cross. I think it'll just jump different dimensions. So I don't if think I you're changing. If I take a photo anything. of myself with my younger self right now, you think the picture won't exist? I think if no, I don't. You I can think, test that right now. You fucking lunatic. I, no, no. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I I don't think you can go back and kill your grandpa and then you don't exist type thing. No, I don't believe that either. I, I think you're just gonna kill someone else's grandpa. Yes. In that time. In that time, I exactly. agree with you. That's what they said. Yeah. That's what they said would happen because as soon as you deviate, it you're entering another time. Because yeah. or else it would be impossible, or else you wouldn't be able to go back in time. That's right. Because in the second you you do anything that new reality the old reality that you left would be destroyed yeah but i heard that you if it's possible you can never get back to your original reality yeah because there's nothing connecting you to it if Crazy. you're able to swap dimensions um the logo you have on your sleeve is like the pedo logo eh where this Go google pedo the greek key yeah yeah google this is Go the greek key i'm bro. telling you google pedo logo it's a swirl exactly like this dude you might yeah, want wanna... it's a triangle it's not a greek key is it a triangle yeah, or is it a circle no, it's a. Uh, it might be a circle too, but they don't, it's not a. It's not a square. This is a. This is ancient. Hold up. I'm just getting uh, pedophile like. Yeah, but logo, yeah. PNG maybe. No, it's not lo pedophile logo. It's the um, boy love logo or some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> the, oh yeah, there it is. That's what it is. Yeah, no, it's not like full triangle. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's what it is. The triangle. Ah, close enough. Oh, bro, I've gone down the rabbit hole of these fucking. Yeah, uh, the swirls. The Illuminati's and all that. Pizza Gate. Yeah. Pizza Gate, I remember. Pizza Gate was fucked up. Well, I saw he says it's funny. He's like. I'll have a small Hawaiian boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, because they ordered pizzas to like, you know, like with cheese, and they're like, oh. So I saw people arguing about the moon landing on Twitter yesterday. Yeah, I saw. What the, were they arguing? Well, you know the video of when the when they're leaving the moon, where the camera pans out and catches. You're like, yeah, them? who's filming? Okay, and then so they go officially. What they said is they were controlling it from Earth, and I'm like, look, bro. They weren't. No, no. Look, bro. We had trouble in the 90s communicating with people who were in a war zone. It would take fucking a minute and a half for them to get the question. Yeah. You're telling me that they were able to control the fucking moon in the 60s, a remote camera. Like, go fuck yourself, Even man. Even the phone call. Even the phone call. All the phone call suspicious. was direct. There was no delay. You're there was like, no delay. Come, Come on. on, guys, man. Like... What I'm asking you is to just use common sense. It does look weird too when you look at it. Yeah, yeah. look at this. It's gonna look a lot weirder. Dude, this in a is second. Stanley Kubrick at his finest. This look, is look, his look, finest perfect. work. Perfect. This is Stanley Kubrick's finest work. Um, I don't believe that this uh that this video is real. I don't believe it's real. But I do believe we landed on the moon. I but I feel yeah. the same way. I feel like we went to the moon, but I don't feel to like just, these videos are real. No, just to uh get one ahead on the Russians because mm -hmm. the Russian cosmonauts were the first ones in space. And that really fucked with America. America yeah. was like, dude, we got to be number one. And the cosmonauts were the first ones to do a spacewalk. So we're like, fuck, JFK, we're going to be on the moon. So he promised the moon. We didn't, we weren't quite there yet, but the Russians were getting close. So we hired Stanley Kubrick, went into the desert, filmed some bullshit, put it up, made a whole thing. People loved it. And I think a few years later we were ready. And that's when all the other Apollo missions started happening. But I do think, uh, I do think... We did it just to beat the Russians. Me too. And it makes sense because we needed that W yeah. at the time during the Cold War. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. And the the other thing that I got into yesterday, I, I want to maybe do a podcast episode, like Pantel's podcast of things that are going to get me killed. So mm. I was looking at banking. Like I did a deep dive into our modern banking system. I used to know a bit of it, like the fractional reserve, the way it worked. And I realized last night when I deep dove into it, not only how insanely illegal it is and nothing makes sense yeah but how fake it is yeah so it got even faker so it used to be fractional reserve you used to put in in a bank a deposit of let's say ten dollars and they were allowed to loan out create money 17 times that then it was 32 times that right. then it was 64 you never 70. end up paying your original debt dude that even deal. crazier yeah. after during 2020 the federal reserve it, it, the states they passed a law where there's no limit. They can, it doesn't matter how much money is in, you could just create infinitely. Okay. Yeah. So what was happening, what, the way it happens is, let's say right now you have a dollar, you have a right. dollar from something, it's worth a dollar and you put it in the bank. Okay. 
the fact this is the thing with the interest payments. The fact that interest exists, interest is is what kills everything. Of course. So the the soon as interest is introduced, yeah. the economy doesn't work anymore. No, it, because it doesn't it is make impossible sense mathematically. Mathematically doesn't make sense because right now you got to pay back a dollar fifty, let's say, right? Yeah. But only a dollar exists. Exactly. So now you're going to create this fifty out of thin air, but it doesn't actually. It's not right. tangible. And it's exponential. And it's exponential because then on that fifty that already doesn't exist, yeah. someone else is going to then create fifty on top of that, yeah. and fifty on something on something that doesn't exist. The only way you can pay off your debt is if another country loses all their money. Yeah. That's the only way you could end up catching it's, up. It's not going to happen because no. now we're at a point where the debt versus the actual money that exists is in the uh, quintillion they said the number was quintillion i don't even know at how this high point it is. it's just make-believe it's just make it's all make-believe yeah. it's all make-believe and we all just believe in the fairy tale to keep making things go yeah, that's what bugs me when people are like i'm gonna vote because we gotta cut our national debt and like all this stuff. Like, none of that matters none voting, of that matters unless you voting, get rid of the federal reserve doesn't matter yeah they won't because they'll kill them but if you have to get you have to do what andrew jackson did you have to get rid of the federal reserve uh and do what lincoln was proposing and did with yep. the greenback have an actual, let's say, dollar, the like greenback, let's say, uh, backed by gold. Yeah. And you give it out at no interest. It's the only way. The second you introduce interest, yeah. y- you you just, everyone's in chains. And yeah. that, that's why, uh, you ever heard the term usury? Well, that's why the banks exist, so they can make money. Yeah, but you heard the term usury? No. Yo, so, bring up usury. Usury? Sounds like a place where you have sex with uh, maybe people who don't want to have sex with you. Yo, this is no joke, guys. You're gonna freak out. This is part of. I can't even read what's so far. The illegal action or practice and lending money at unreasonable high rates of interest. Yeah. So, uh, and if you go back into it Europe, sounds, it just sounds like a Asian guy saying usually, doesn't it? Usually, usually. I usually do this. <laughs> I usually don't charge this much. <laughs> I usually don't charge you. By the way, th- this, this also much. goes back to why uh, there was uh, Jewish hate for Jews in Europe. Mm-hmm. So, th- so this for a long time, people knew that it's fucking crazy to loan people money at interest. It's fu- so what they did is you weren't allowed to do it. Let's say if you were a Christian, you were allowed to do it. So they said, well, the Jews it's not in their religion, so they can do it. Ah, yeah. So they were the only ones lending money at an interest. Ah, and obviously, after a certain while, you get, it's interest. You're going to make so much money out of it. Yeah. And then every time they'd get super big, they'd get kicked out of a country. Was it? Wasn't it like uh, back in like Jesus's day to like go to church? You would have to pay like a half shekel, but you couldn't get a half shekel. Uh, because you had to uh, to get a half shekel, you'd have to buy it, and it's like a whole thing. Oh, I have like no that. idea, but that's crazy. Yeah, it was like a whole money thing back then too. Yeah, it's... money's weird, dude. Money, money's weird. Money's weird. Like bartering is dope, which is why I love like niche communities because you got people who who like uh, make things on Etsy or like you know that do uh, have like a a trade, that, and you're like, hey man, if you fucking build me this, I will. I will, you know, make you, I will build you a shed if you, if you build me, if you fix my tractor. Like, I love that idea. I don't because, of, listen to me, you fucking hippie. Mm. That <laughs> works for certain things. Yeah. But let's say right now, let's say you, you're good at building. All you can do is build houses. Yeah. You can build a house, but you want three oranges. It's going to be very hard to break that down at a price that's reasonable if I give you three we'll oranges to build my house. We'll figure it out. That, that's why money is good. Your life supply oranges. Money's good. But the problem is it's supposed to be used as a as a currency. It's not being used properly now because they're making no, money's up not good. Gold it. is good. But that's if yeah. but no no, but Precious money just metals. represents gold. Hopefully. Now yeah. it doesn't. But let's say if money was real yeah. and it was representing gold, yeah, you like just it break it down, yeah. Like they used to. And then oh, this is worth zero point whatever gold. That makes sense. But now it's it's not backed on anything, it's just backed on faith. Do you know what's crazy? crazy? Is that even I just realized this actually, even back then, we're talking hundreds of years ago when people, you know, used to shave their gold. Yeah. They like shavings and stuff to pay for things. Even back then, we knew that gold was rare. Um, you know, Midas and all that. We were always trying to turn, uh, you know, alchemists were trying to turn everything uh, into gold, into gold, right? But it's impossible because we we now know that the only way gold is created and other heavy metals are only created through the collision of two neutron stars. So you have two. Why are you lying? This is this is this is how gold is made. How you gold met a neutron star? Gold, platinum, all of this is two stars colliding and the fusion of that is so fucking crazy and the element's so crazy that's the only way so gold cannot be created which is why it's rare well are you saying gold is magical gold is magical gold platinum all this stuff check it out that's look how gold is created otherwise we would make gold yeah we would find a way to like pressurize it for millions of years whatever it is but gold is created so the alchemists were full of shit gold earth form is in a supernova and neutron star collisions that occurred before the solar systems formed so that's why there's a limited amount of gold titanium but 
Look, this is the amount of gold that is on Earth right now that's <clears> mined out. That's the amount of gold we that's have it? right now. Yeah, that image there. So gold is rare. I got some of that. But yeah. that's why that's why um, they're looking to mine these meteors. Whoa. Because these meteors still have some of the remnants of this collision that happened before our solar system formed. And it could potentially, you know, change everything. But it, I think it's just so interesting that hundreds of years ago, before we had telescopes, we knew that this shit was rare. Well, Anunnaki, you want to talk about that? I mean, that, why? They how do said, we know that gold is rare? Well, they said that we were bred here. One of our jobs was to mine gold for the Anunnaki. And why they wanted gold is that they put it up in their atmosphere. The atmosphere is fucked yeah, up. It and blocks it, the radiation. It blocks something. the radiation. Is that even p plausible? You're a man of science. We do use some gold on like the James Webb telescope, but the amount of gold used is so little. It's like a grams that we use uh, to cover this thing. It's not It's not uh, a large supply. But it's still... But it does have... Small, imagine but it does it have big. properties that uh, shield from radiation, yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, but I'm sure it wasn't until we found that out did we start making up stories. Um, I, I think... Well, no, the, the, it's the Sumerian texts. Yes, yeah, but, not, but uh, the Sumerians weren't like, we're going to shield our earth with gold. Like, that wasn't... What it wrote? No, it I don't wasn't know, but I don't speak. I don't speak that made-up gibberish. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's really hard to say, but I mean, just imagine everything told from a human perspective is the perspective of humans, right? So even religion, let's say there is something, uh, beyond what we know spiritually or scientifically sexual or both or sexually or, or mentally, whatever it is, even if there is something we're all, we're always going to, uh, see it from our perspective. Of course. So we're never going to, uh, truly understand those type of things, right? So, you know, when you hear stories of like, oh, it descended from the heavens and all this stuff, it's like, that's just humans telling it how they saw it. And they could be full of shit. They could be drunk. They could be hallucinating. All these things exist, right? So it's hard to, hard to say what's Epstein real. Epstein list. What are we saying about it? Which one? Which list? The, 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 two lists. the last leak. There's a flight log and there's a client list. So the flight log. Flight log is whatever. I'm like literally... Uh, if you're, if you have a lot of money and you're an A-list celebrity, yeah, you get into some cool parties. Yeah. Once you get into these cool parties, you start hearing about these people who put on these parties. A good example is Bill Zarian, right? What happened to that guy? Is he dead? He's still hanging around playing oh. poker. Fucking women. Yeah. Playing, playing women, fucking poker. Uh, playing poker, fucking women. Yeah, he's doing all that stuff still, but, but like, that's like the inner circles, right? So then you're like, oh, fucking, you hear about this Epstein guy has his own private islands in the Bahamas. Yeah, it sounds like a good time. It's in the Bahamas? It's in the Bahamas. Ooh. Yeah. There was, uh, they were talking about it not too long ago, too. I think it was Chris Tucker. Who was on the Chris list? Tucker's on the client, saying, or the, the flight log, <gasps> rather. Yeah, he was saying he flew to Africa with other businessmen to go do stuff like in Africa, but they ended up taking one of Epstein's planes. Yeah, he would lend it That's out. That's why he was on the list, basically. Yeah. He didn't even go to the island. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people didn't go to the island. Yeah. But even if you did go to the island, like uh, Epstein had hosted a lot of parties in Vegas as well. He was known, and in New York, he was known party as, animal. as a party goer. And if you wanted to be in the who's who you of crowds, you would show up to one of these parties, right? And sometimes you get like, uh, there's that Netflix documentary about the uh, Asian guy who, who was like, had this whole pyramid scheme, but basically he would pay celebrities like quarter million dollars to just hang out at his parties and he would throw the craziest parties, but also using everybody's money and, and whatnot, being a criminal. But it's something for Hollywood to to just be seen, right? So it's not that crazy that you're like, oh, this billionaire invites you on a private jet. Yeah, you go. Now, you go 20 fucking six times, yeah, you know what I mean? Then it, then it's like, all right, what, what are you doing here? What are you, what's and going on? the client list, we don't have any info on that yet. We have spec, we have, all we have is uh, uh, the witnesses, their testimony, part so, of their testimony. Oh, like a Clinton... Yeah, the witnesses who were there on the island who say who they saw, uh, but there's nothing concrete really. I think the the most Clinton concrete and Prince one, Andrew, are the most concrete ones, and and Hawking's maybe like that. Oh, even yeah, that's not I mean, concrete. It's just like a story. It, it is concrete. Yeah, it's, it's somebody saying he liked to see midgets uh, solve equations. No, that's on, not true. That was a meme. That's not true. That is true. No, it's not. It's a meme. Nope. Yes, it was. Pull it up. No, no, no. It's a meme. I I, I was on Twitter when it was happening. I was on Twitter when the meme account made it. And then the guy said, I can't believe we just did this as a meme. It's not, guys, this has nothing to do with the list. The midget thing? Yeah, it was a meme. Because when his name came out, this meme account on Twitter 
made that up and but they thought no one was it was just a joke we need to but fact then check. It, it started being taken out of context and then they even wrote they go we can't believe how far they, we were just fucking around when his name came up we thought that that's what he would do no no it has to do with the midgets he liked uh watching people fuck apparently that's what they said mm. and then they made up the midget thing with the calculations yeah i prefer that yeah. version. that was a meme but i knew that he's a party animal because i've seen documentaries about steve what kind of party animal is he i would say he's more like a manatee <laughs> so if you there's a documentary on Netflix called something about black holes or some shit mm-hmm. where a bunch of scientists also on, 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 on an island <laughs> and they keep saying, oh, wait till Steven gets here. He's a party animal. This guy's crazy at the party. And I was like, this guy's a fucking vegetable. What is he talking about? Who's bringing him And then man? he showed up like this yeah. and like, ah, and there, all these nerds are dancing. And I go, are they fucked in the head? This guy's just in a chair saying nothing. Yeah. So I had the, I was under the impression that Stephen Hawking is, is not a genius. They, the science community uses him to, put a stamp of approval on all their theories because there's a thing where he's like this and the guy's doing like I think the equation is this what do you think and then they look over at Hawking and Hawking's like this <laughs> and he just plays the sound on his phone I think so and you're he's like just like this he doesn't say anything <laughs> he's like this and the guy's like ah yeah you're probably right uh, and like what the fuck is happening yeah he's got to have a weird looking dick yeah but I don't yeah the the midges thing was just a meme on the online how we weird do you think far his dick looks, yeah, I'm looking at the the midget dick? thing, but it's like they're they're talking about the situation. They're not saying it's real or not. Uh, they're just yeah, Epstein is talking about it in the document, <laughs> supposedly. Do you know what would be crazy? Yeah. Uh, if Epstein came back, you think he killed? Kill, you think maybe he didn't kill himself? I no, I would just say that that would be crazy. If like the next act in the simulation was him showing up and being like, "All right." We got him, and he's in court, and he's like, "Here's what really fucking happened." Like, come on, that would be the fucking best act. And he's like, "The government knew about this shit. They paid me to film Prince Andrew fuck kids so that they can fuck." You know, like that in the next act would be so sick. And that's what they're doing, right? He was yeah, massaged. Obviously. He just wanted to get dirt on people. So he dude, could he had it. eighty cameras in his New York apartment. When the CIA raided, they had a uh, they had a safe filled with videos. Not one of those videos has seen the light of day. Yeah, we don't know even though that. we placed one of these witnesses, one of these uh, victims, in the New York apartment with Prince Andrew at the time, still we see no video evidence of anything. Even though that video is out there, the surveillance video is out there. So, yeah, I, I think CIA might, and this might get me killed. Uh, I, I'm not uh, suicidal, by the way. Um, I think the CIA was using Epstein. That's my big thing. Because I know that the Mossad who, was. He worked for the, You think he was a double agent? Of course. So you, you think he worked for Mossad and who was he really working for? Okay. You have the most intelligent people in the USA, right? Working for intelligence. Roseanne. Right? These 19 these 19 agencies, uh, intelligence agencies for the USA. Now let's say CIA, NSA, like top FBI, whatever. And they got a I mean, all they're doing all day long is intel, intelligence. All they're trying to get is more info to protect the country, right? Yeah. If you have blackmail on people that are important, guess what you also have? Power. You have info. Uh, You have intel. You have everything they know, right? So who better to do their dirty work than someone else? They're not going to do their dirty work. They're not going to set up bugs. That's illegal. But the Mossad can. They'll hit, they'll hit up Epstein and they'll be like, all right, listen, we know what you're already doing. Uh, we want a piece of it. We're going to fund your bullshit. We'll give you money. You'll live a whole thing. But if the ship goes down, guess what? We're not going down with you. And then they confiscated all of the fucking CIA. None of that saw the light of day. CIA owns all that shit. Like for sure, that's what they're doing just for intelligence. You want to secure the nation. You're going to do it by any means necessary. So I do think... Uh, I do think he was probably working with government at one point. I mean, I'm, I'm c- convinced he was working with someone. That's for sure. I know he has ties to Mossad, but you're right, probably CIA. And 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 you're in a maximum security facility, one of the most well protected facilities in the United States. You got to be so fucking powerful to be able to get in there, kill him, kill a man, get out. And, and say that the guards fell asleep right. and the camera stopped working at that right. time. It's How like a powerful movie. is that fucking person? So I don't think it's a person. I think it's someone who controls that fucking jail yeah. and who controls the whole country. I think it's 
the deep, deep state deep deep state yeah 100%. holy shit that's that's i mean left season's family afterwards they had a doctor analyze the body and everything yeah and it was like proven like the doctor was like this guy got killed yeah he did not hang himself his neck was broken the rope was higher than it would say it was lower than if you hang yourself the rope was actually right. down there right like a he bunch was strangled of stuff, and yeah. it just and also where's he gonna find rope and then he wanted uh, his brother wanted the autopsy yeah his brother went to new york recently epstein's brother and they refused to give him any any medical. He went to the do- the hospital where he's put it, and they refused him to give him any. They're like, no, we don't know where the documentation is supposed to be here. It's not here. Holy yeah, shit! One hundred percent. This is like the CIA involved. That I, I know that that they're involved. I just didn't think. Yeah, probably a double agent. He was probably working. Of he course. was working for the Mossad, and then he's like, "Well, if you want to operate in our country for the Mossad, when we need info, you're going to give us the fucking info." Yeah, they're going to say, "Oh, wait, you're mingling with the most powerful people on the planet." And we're just going to let this happen? No. <laughs> no, dude. That's crazy. They're obviously going to get involved. And they're obviously going to say, hey, Epstein, gig's up. Keep doing your thing. But, uh, you know, when you get fucked over, it's it's going to be you. It's going to be on you. What do you think? I keep hearing scientists say that, oh, we've cracked the code. It really does seem like this is a hologram, like we're in a simulation. And every time I see it, I'm like, I, don't, I, I feel like I don't understand what simulation means because I don't understand what they're saying that this is a hologram. Uh, I spoke to an astrophysicist. Yeah, explain it to me. Uh, about this, like a few weeks ago, last week actually. Um, Lisa, I forget her last name, but she works for uh, she works for the the Smithsonian. She's in the lady, of, like, the telescope. Yeah, you couldn't find a real astrophysicist. <laughs> yeah. She uh, she's one of the people who took the first picture of the black hole. <gasps> yeah, very very smart person, super genius. And I was asking her questions about uh, about this, about the simulation theory, and and What'd she's. She you know, obviously, uh, you know, her belief is still that like, oh, there's life out there, but we haven't found it. It's not coming here type thing. It's very scientific minded, you know, so I'm always I keep an open mind for that stuff. But in terms of simulation theory, she says, yeah, that's one of the leading theories. She won't say it's true or it's not true. She says, uh, we think that uh, there are basically how I can cast a two dimensional shadow right onto a two dimensional plane. My three-dimensional hand can cast a two-dimensional shadow. Yeah. Um, We're the shadow? No, we are the shadow of something else, and that is the shadow of something else, and so on and so forth. So there is a fourth dimension doing something, interacting, but it only appears to us in a three-dimensional context. So like right now, just uh, if you, because I don't understand what you're saying. Let's see if I can simplify it, and maybe you could tell me. So right now, I'm on this podcast. We're here. We're talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I live my life. You go around, you buy coffee, you eat. Mm-hmm. Are you saying that someone else is controlling us no nope. are you saying we're just accidentally here that's what i don't get no uh simulation doesn't mean everything is a predestined simulation just means let's say right now we invent some ai and mm-hmm. let them talk to each other yeah that's a simulation they don't know they're in a simulation right and they think they're having an organic uh conversation they can speculate about another dimension that exists but they could never prove it and they could never they could never even uh, comprehend it. They could never okay. verbalize it. So now let's say AI, let's say the game you were playing yeah. where you were tricking the AI into thinking he was a pederast. So that game, the world around it, the building blocks of it, they don't understand. If you try to explain to that simulation, yeah. build a building, they're going to be like, because it's ones and zeros that built it. Yeah. Whereas we control our reality around us. So we think. Like I can build stuff. Yeah, sure. Or you perceive to build stuff. You, uh, we, we only, okay. So things don't exist. Things only exist in here. That's not Uh, true. Let me explain. Uh, Your senses. Yeah. Touch, smell, sight. uh, Was it touch, smell, sight, hearing, uh, all of these things. They don't happen here. I can also see Bruce Willis. Right. But like you go like this, that's, you're not feeling something here. You're feeling it here. Your brain is telling you that it's here. You understand? So all the things that are happening, your sound and everything, isn't happening here. It's being interpreted. No, it's being interpreted here, but it is happening brain. here. No. Yeah, that's, yeah. That is the way your brain interprets it. Because well, no, I'll give you an example. So let's say this. Yep. That noise is being interpreted here, yes. but the noise, the effect of that explosion happened here. That's only as far as we know. But the truth is, is that everything that's happening outside is being interpreted through an internal mechanism that's telling us distance that's telling us things but if you're a different type of organism that information might be different right 
we're just uh, collectively experiencing reality the way that our brains are putting it together. Are you sure this isn't part of your demonic agenda? This is this is this is life. This is how you see things. Uh, things don't happen out here; they happen in here. Everything happens in your brain. Nothing is real; it's only in your brain. And if you look at uh, the double slit experiment and these type of things, they they also show you that observation is key. Observation makes reality; it changes reality. I know about that. Yeah, the double. I'm more of a single slit type of dude. <laughs> I know the uh, double slit one where if you're observing the uh, atoms, yeah, they uh, the react protons, one, yeah. the proton. They 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 react one way. If you're not, they react another way. That's right. I don't know. Like I I need an independent. And body. that's been proven time and time again, by the way. By the same people, though. Oh, no, by by so many different physicists. At the Large Hadron Collider. You don't need a Large Hadron Collider to do no, that I'm test. I'm saying those are the guys that were doing the test. I want an independent So those study. tests have been done by so many people over time. That is proven, and the tests have been proven. So that's just quantum physics. Uh, we don't understand why quantum physics works the way it does, but we know how to predict it. So we use that information to create Bluetooth technology, to create lasers, to create all sorts of Hold on a wonderful second. things. So we, but we don't know why it behaves that way. For example, if you're not looking, observing, observing. Yeah. All right, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It needs to, so if it's being recorded, that's right. Which is insane. It is insane, and that's the one thing that Einstein didn't like. That's like bouncing. Observing is bouncing light off of something, basically, so it is per perceivable. Well, I mean, there's there's sound, there's recordings, there's all sorts of there's information. It's just observing. Yeah, it's uh, the conscious act of observing something, uh, recording something, being having something, you know, know what's going to happen that changes the outcome. Uh, so the whole if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, does it make a noise? The answer is, if you're not observing it, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. It does not if you're not observing it. It does make noise. Right. To to a lay person like you, it makes noise always. No, no. But to scientific minds, well, no, that, it that, does not make noise. It's, it's the opposite of what you just said. To anyone that could, I know, for example, if I throw that cup on the floor, hmm? whether I'm here or not, if I throw it on the floor, I know how it reacts, right? That's so not, if I'm that's out of the room that's and you throw it, I know what's going to happen. You do not. I do. No, you assume. Based on previous observations, which makes sense. And that's why quantum theory doesn't make any sense. Because they're noticing if they don't observe it, it does change. The Again, I, I think it's cool as shit. Yeah. But it's hard to grasp. They've lied. No, no, but they've lied before, bro. Scientists lie a lot. Archaeologists lie a lot. Uh, archaeologists right. are still maintaining but lies. It, it's the math behind. Archaeologists are still making lies about the the. This pyramids. isn't archaeology. No, I'm just saying this is science. I, but I'm saying they make lies. They yeah. they they push lies repeatedly throughout history. Right. Depending on what funding they need, we use the math to create the technology that we're using right now. We use the math of quantum mechanics and quantum physics. The math that says that if you don't observe it, it changes. That same math is used right now. How so? It's used in, in, in lasers. It's used yeah, in Bluetooth how, how, technology. How is that used in lasers? It's all about uh, percentages. So they can predict what percentage if they, uh, basically if they shoot this laser, if they shoot this proton, they can predict uh, this goes 30%, 30%, 30% instead of hitting it like a wave. They can predict that. They don't know why it splits into particles rather than waves. They have no idea why. That's the crazy part. They also know that quantum entanglement. They know that if I change the um, uh, the polarity of of a proton over here and and or electron over here and, and at the other end of the universe, that other one, they're entangled yeah, I, and they'll switch. I heard instantly. that too. I heard that too. So they use that to create technological advancements. They use the math behind that. They don't know why it works that way, but they know it does work and they can predict it. See, that's another thing I don't understand that sentence. So if they if they know the math behind it, but they don't, for example, mm -hmm. two plus two is what? It's four. Okay. So yeah. you know why it's four. Yeah. No, they know that two plus two is four. They don't know why. Like they don't know why. They know why 2 plus 2 is 4, but there's other things they don't know why, like quantum mechanics, because uh, there's two types of physics, right? There's classical physics and quantum physics. There, we're missing the, the bridge between the two. We don't have one single theory. That's the whole holy grail with that physics. That connects everything? We want the one theory, the theory that connects quantum physics to classical physics. We don't have that. Right now, quantum physics behaves differently than classical physics. Classical physics teaches us, uh, I cannot put my hand through this table. Quantum physics says, well, there's a chance you can. What do you mean uh, there's a chance you can? 
well, there's like a 10 to the power of whatever that you can put your hand through the table. Uh, atoms and, and whatnot will miss but, you. Okay, but that's fucked up because that's like, you see, that that's the kind of shit that pisses me off. So I know if I slam this table, my hand is not going to go through it, okay? If you slam it, it doesn't, first. It doesn't mean that if you would change the molecular structure of this table, it can't. I'm talking about the table as is. There's I a, know chan- I can't there's go a non-zero chance that your hand will go through. But the, most of those answers come from resolving equations. Yep. Like the quantum entanglement thing is like, how do we bring a black hole to zero? They're going to do like this mathematical equation. And the only way to resolve the equation is to add something to it. So like there's there's an, like if you hit the table an infinite amount of times, one time it is your hand is going to go through it. And that makes it the equation zero. Yeah. So like you have to add something like that into the equation to make it possible. So you have to make something. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. So you think there's a chance that I could smack this there's table? There's a non-zero chance that you can put your hands through this table. I know, but that's... A, a non-zero f- is a big number. It could be you do it every second since the beginning of uh, the Big Bang. Yeah, and it yeah. would still not happen yet. But it's a non-zero chance, which means it's not zero. That's fucked. Up. Yeah. That's- it's like saying, you know, uh, you know, uh, fucking, I don't know. Barney will never kill you, but uh, yeah, yeah like a know. dog. Yeah, it's exactly. like uh, a Chihuahua can't kill you, but the chances. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, there's a zero point zero exactly. zero. Yeah, that's fu- I hate that shit. And that's what's awesome about like uh, like theoretical physics, but it's also what pissed off Einstein. Einstein has a word for uh, quantum entanglement. And Gay. No, sp- yeah, <laughs> it was. Um, he said spooky action at a distance. Oh yeah, spooky. I fucking knew this. Yeah, yeah. and that spooky is spooky actions. Yeah. That's because he hated it. He did not like it. He didn't like Schrodinger's box. He didn't like Schrodinger's paradox. He yeah, but Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's paradox was I put a cat in a box. Is the cat alive or dead? No, no. There is. A, it's way more deep than that. There's okay, a, go. Uh, so basically, there um, there is some radiation in there that is decaying. Yeah, and it can either decay or not decay. If it decays, it creates enough gas to like uh, poison the thing. And if it doesn't, and there's like a 50-50 chance that it decays or it doesn't. You can't control if it decays or not. Okay. So you put that in there. Now you have an extra variable. So now, as long as that's in there, the cat is both dead and alive but, until you observe it. Okay, but that's not true either. It, it is impossible it's not, to disprove. It's uh, The cat isn't either... because um, it's, it, it's in a state of both dead and alive until it's observed. But it's not in a state of both dead and alive. It's either dead or alive. We just don't know what it is. Uh, it's so, not in a state of dead or alive. It's, we just where, don't know what so it that's is. That's where theoretical physics comes in. When you're talking about holograms or you talk about is this uh is this reality real that's where they are because if they stopped at like if, oh it's it, either so, dead or not then no, we so, wouldn't have let's science. Say someone's standing behind that wall yeah. i can't see him and i fire through the wall right okay mm-hmm. but there's no noise like we're sound so i don't know whether i hit him or not right right he's not both alive and dead until we observe i him? have to find out whether i killed him or not yeah. but the reality is he's not both if he's no one, one or observes, the other if no one observes him yeah until he is observed, he is in a state of both dead and alive. Yeah, that is like it's the a philosophical. Of it it's it's, yeah. it's a philosophical state. So, but it, it's not. It it's not a um, uh, a physical. It's not a tangible. Well, it's a philo- philosophically yes. Well, that's why it's theory. Uh, but that's also the like theory. if I don't look at the lottery ticket, right? I either won or lost. I don't know. But those are, I haven't won and lost at the same time. No, because there's a greater chance that you lost. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, but if it's a 50-50 and you don't control the variables, it's in a state of both. Um, and w- when you observe it, you lock into a dimension, basically. A dimension where the cat is alive or dimension. And now, as soon as you create that probability, you've created another reality or you haven't even created it. It's already been created. But you enter it. But you're entering one or the other. I don't know, man. Some of it I like. It's some, theoretical. Some of it is just gay. Yeah, it's really hard to comprehend, and it's hard for people to wrap their heads around the fact that, like, I have another theory. Everything, everything. Um, so imagine time didn't exist, right? Um, Einstein said that the only reason we have time is so that everything doesn't happen all at once, and that is the leading theory. And this is what the astrophysicist told me as well. What are you saying? The leading theory is that everything is happening at the same time. Everything all is happening at once. Our temporal filter that we have in this human interface allows us to perceive time, the dimension of time. You understand? I have a theory. But all of the possible things you could have ever said right now exist at once. And you're jumping into them, even though there's an infinite number. 
you are jump and it's all once. And now, now time, time makes this. I have a good concept. Without time, it's this for a film, and I hope nobody steals it. And maybe we could get funding and we could make it. You ever have those feelings where you you just feel like you get dizzy for a moment and you just get lost, and for one second you're not really there anymore, like you're just done. You ever get that feeling? Uh, like you're out of your body? For one second, not like an out-of-body experience, but like you either get really dizzy and you're like, what the fuck just happened? And you feel like, am I dying? Like it's just that one second. Sure. Okay. I, I have a cool concept where I'm thinking of it is imagine every time that happens, okay? Basically in that reality, in that mm -hmm. timeline, that's the moment where you die. Right. Okay? And the fact that you snap out of it, you're now in the other timeline where you continued living okay. and you're living. So your whole, you're yeah. living through that because there's one giant timeline mm -hmm. that you live till, let's say when you die at the end and then, sure. but all the other ones also existed and you die in different parts mm -hmm. and then they spiral out depending on now that world changed because that world you're dead, okay. but you're continuing. So you're seeing what the world would be like had you not died there. <laughs> and I, I don't know so, how to frame it properly, but I'm thinking that would be a good concept for a movie. Like so that. what you're describing is like basically the MCU, right? You're kind describing uh, if I change something, it creates another path. Right? Kind of, this but is, in the sense this, that you don't know it because right. you're living Obviously, your whole life yeah, I, I get and you're you've saying. had so many deaths because all the possibilities sure. are out there. So you've died millions of times without even knowing it. Yeah. And all those other ones, if you were able to explore them, they're all different. Some of them you die as yes. an infant, so you never affected this other stuff, which never affected that. So they're all infinite. So imagine and that I'm just saying that feeling, trying to explain that but feeling that's that you true. get. It's because yeah. you just died in that timeline, you moved to another one. Like the 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 frequency is so close that oh shit, I lost connection. But don't worry, I'm continuing in this one. That reminds me of like when you have a clone of yourself, like the idea of when you clone yourself. It's all they the think it's you. The same thing up until that so point. Your clone just basically wakes up at the second it's born, yeah. but has all the memories of the past. It's yeah. like that one second of... I mean, yeah, as, yeah, as, yeah, a, exactly. as a fictional yeah. piece, and it's fun to think about that, and I think it's a good idea, uh, but if you if you look at it as like an actual like theory, you have to imagine that all of those timelines have already happened and yeah. are happening at once. Yeah, I believe and that. And so we experience the, oh, I, I died, and then this life continues. No, we don't experience the die. You don't sure, know. But you whatever. need okay. some kind of another but entity. But then another universe experience, the death, whatever it is. Yeah. But I'm saying is that like, that's still through uh, a filter of time. Yeah. And so rather than time, the idea is that everything already happened and is happening and doesn't stop happening and never started. It's just one thing. Yeah, and I, I know that all, all things are happening yeah. at the same time. Whatever's going to happen has already happened. It is happening. I've looked into all that stuff and it, it, it shocks me. It's cool. And it makes me think it is possible because the only reason why scientifically we, we use a linear timeline is because that was the best way to tell time and the way we observe things. But there well, we is, experience time. That's how we experience time. We do experience time, yeah. But there is something to the theory that what if time was in a straight line? Mm -hmm. What if time it just isn't. is? It is. Just is. And then technically, you could, I don't know if you could, but it's like what you said, some entity could just pop in and out of different of times of different realities. Yeah. Just that we're not there. It's kind of like a save state in the game. The yeah. game, technically, if you especially if you're coding, forget just saving. If you could jump in any version of that game mm -hmm. with the parameters, the way you set them, at any moment. Yeah. And they don't know any better. Let's say you can. Let's say everything's a frequency. Everything's yeah. sort of a vibrational frequency, even time. So let's say if I place this here, right, and that. Me placing that there at this time, at that location in space time, creates a vibration right now, a physical vibration that you can measure down to the minute little thing, right? Yeah. Now, placing it here changes the vibration a little bit, changes the frequency because the time is different, the location's different, there's a, the earth is in a different place, so it's a different vibration. But let's say I've, I noted that vibration, right? And let's say I take the difference between these two. And then I overwhelm this object with that vibration. This might just appear there where it was in the previous frequency. It's like tuning into a radio. It's That's like, what, it's but like, this is still very theoretical. It makes sense a bit, but dude, I, is the there earth being round was theoretical. But, was, but the earth, we could prove it because we just go and we observe and it. Again, we're going to prove all this. What if it might go, take a billion years, but we'll get there. What if we fuck this all up? Like, let's say by going through, let's say we figure it out. We're like, holy fuck, 
this is one frequency, one dimension in right. an enf- infinite possibility. Mm-hmm. And we find a way to measure that. And then we go through. What if the second we tear through, kind of like game code, the second you pass a certain parameter, now you just crash the whole thing. You just fucked it. We might destroy everything. I don't. Um, yeah. I, again, I think I think uh, everything we observe is through a human interface. And I think that human interface observes time. So we have concepts of it ends everything. That's the end. It kills everything. But what if there's something that lives outside of that? That's what I'm saying. That doesn't have an end. So you saying, what if it ends everything is completely irrelevant to whatever that other thing is. Yeah, but for us, it could end everything. For No, for the experience, for your human experience. Yeah. Whatever happens after isn't human anymore. Let's say a video game. Let's just install it on your computer. And now I fuck up and I break it. I'm in the game, right? The yeah. simulation fucks up somewhere. And the guy has to uninstall it. Mm-hmm. I just destroyed my reality. Yeah, that you know guy's what? still there. He but could... you know what? There's a still there's still a guy. And who said that that guy didn't get you from somewhere? This player, right? Who said that the inspiration of this player didn't come from somewhere else? And that person's still out there. Like it. It's wacky. Well, the idea. I found out sperm today. They said we've been observing it wrong. Sperm doesn't slither like a snake. Oh, it spirals, and they've been they've been. Uh, oh damn! Sperm has been tricking scientists. They said for 250 years, it it Shit. actually spirals. That's <laughs> how they dig down that egg. Crazy, eh? Yeah, they're like uh, drilling for oil. I I just read this today. <laughs> uh, Wait, so like yeah, so like miners are like just physical representations, mass representations of sperm. Yeah, Crazy, eh? They're just going down. They're doing the same things their ancestors did. Just jizz. <laughs> they're just human jizz. So this is this is very wacky. I'm so curious about like how, um, if ever in my lifetime, we're going to have that one. I, I just want that one thing that shows like, okay, this isn't just I don't think, theory, yeah, I don't, conspiracy theory, mumbo jumbo. So it's we're not. Cons- now we're in seven minutes, by the right, way. Nice. Somewhere. It's not conspiracy. Uh, it's theoretical physics right so a lot of this is backed and and it a theory in physics isn't like me saying what if a theory has to be uh proven for it to be a, a theory it has to work right to be a work no, there, there are working theories you, you could theory. no, no, you could have a hypothesis yeah which is uh my hypothesis is that we are uh we are you know uh physical beings and that transdimensional does not exist that is my hypothesis yeah. it's not a theory a theory has to be tested for it to be a theory. Like uh, the Big Bang Theory is a theory because the math checks out. Not anymore. Uh, it checked out at the time. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Okay, so... By the way, the Big Bang, we don't talk about that a lot. I only I found out through accident, through articles popping up my feed, the Big Bang now is starting to be questioned. It, uh, the Big Bang has been questioned since we... No, 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 but it was questioned for different reasons. Some people were like, I don't have no bang. That's not a question. I mean, now yeah. scientifically, and, and it makes me even more curious. I'm like... Where the fuck what do we, we measure? Was it the heat signatures of radiation? It was something they that the galactic static there, yeah. and they found out recently that it was like at minimum double the age that it was. Uh, that was that was one person who said yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, they're saying that it could have been something which now it makes our whole reality even more complicated. It could it could now, double the time uh, liner because now if somebody because it's almost like not someone again it's through our perception but like let's say we consider a god for example like something had started it on purpose or that adds a whole new dimension because I mean oh wait then that means that we don't understand what the fuck's going on that means that there's something. Even, bigger out there we're this small Obviously. no we're smaller than that yeah. it's crazy yeah. bro it, i've seen something like that where there's a theory of there's several big bangs in the universe yeah. the universe is so infinitely big and one day universes will cross each other like we're one explosion somewhere there's another explosion somewhere but that's the other thing is the way they first described the big bang was that out of nothing came something but we know there from was, observable science all the universe could fit in your pinky but out of nothing you can't create uh, combustion so there was something so it's like what is that something that's the that's the paradox once you find that something I don't know if it's the remember they were talking about the god particle like what's that something what's that something that instigated everything but then maybe it's because we don't understand it well maybe it's because we think it was nothing and then this thing came and blew it up. Wrong way. Maybe it's maybe it's always existed. It, we didn't start from zero. There exactly. was a one. It's just so crazy. Well, you have, you have to think about this, Patels. Even if okay, you got scientists, yeah, who think that oh everything was here. Okay, who put that there? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. What was before that? What was before that? And then you're then you're gonna say oh well before that was this. Okay, cool. What was, what before, was before that? that? Yeah. Exactly. So there's a problem here. The problem is that there's no beginning, and I think that's the answer. The answer is that there is no beginning. The universe never began. It's a very hard concept for it's us. It's very hard. It hurts your grasp. head. Of course. But when we think about never ending, we always think about from now till forever. We don't think about from forever till forever. And that 
might just be the answer is that everything has always existed forever and will never not exist. You ever come out of your head and just look like as if you're zooming out and you go all the way up, like just think about how far it is. Does yeah. That always, I do that sometimes just thinking about how small we are and it always fucks with me. You know that we are the universe observing itself. Listen here, hippie. You think about it. <laughs> if the big bang theory is true and we all came from, uh, you know, uh, stardust, right? We're all made from the same elements. And eventually this fungus grew into fish that exited the water that grew brain that all this, right? But I, I feel like that's bullshit. Okay, whatever that is, if we started here, that exploded and made us, we are this. Yeah. We are the universe looking at itself, questioning its own existence. Yeah. Very crazy. Very crazy. Like I've heard of that too. Of the universe, basically. Yeah. It's like, no, we grew eyes to observe. That's right. The universe grew us to we, see yeah. itself to a certain extent. And, yeah. and, and those eyes that we have might not see the whole spectrum. Just like a dog doesn't see the whole spectrum. Like infrared or ultraviolet. What or, if, uh, or a thousand other things that we yeah. can't see. You know? One last thing before we leave. What if we're all wrong? Mm -hmm. Earth was as simple as we remember it. We were the bad people who died. This is hell. Mm -hmm. And we're being fucked with. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. At this point, you know, <laughs> I'll leave you with a quote from uh, Doug <laughs> Douglas Adams uh, from A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. In an infinite universe, everything is possible. Yeah. Pigs can fly. I take the plane a lot, so correct. That's true. Yeah. Pigs have flown. <laughs> Chris Ramsey is online. They gotta, they Mike Ward is seats. on tour. <laughs> Poseidon is the Poseidon69 on Twitter, Instagram, and the YouTube. PenthouseComedy.com. I got more new patrons this week, a lot more. Nice. Uh, I think people realized they didn't know how much I was doing just on Patreon because mm. a lot of stuff is early on Patreon and then it comes everywhere else. But there's bonus tapes and, in French as well and in English that just appear. There's also like projects that I do for myself. That I just put on Patreon. And the Discord, you got a whole oh, the community Discord, there. The Discord's free. People watch stuff on the Discord. They yeah. discuss. Two people fell in love on the Discord. Really? Started dating. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys watch UFC shit too, right? Whatever you want. Yeah. The Discord, uh, Hal San, uh, Amelie, they run that shit, and they're yeah. they're killers. Like they know what they're doing. I have no idea how yeah, that shit works. Yeah, it's a dope works. place. Yeah, I just pay for the yearly thing so people could go yep. on it, but I I don't run it. I keep telling people I don't fucking I don't know how it works. It's all good. So Discord, go on there. Uh, Chris Ramsey is flying in and out of places. What are you doing? Why why are you everywhere? Uh, Area 52 is keep me busy. So that's what it is. A lot of investigation. Oh yeah, it's true, bro. I'm so retarded. Yeah, it's it's for that. We're gonna talk about some after. Yeah, we, we got a lot. This. We got a lot to talk uh, about. MikeWar.ca. Mike already golden ticket this year for God his damn, new what a show. Fucking goat, eh? Yeah, get him to platinum. He's gonna Jeez. double that shit. He will though. He's gonna double it. This tour didn't start. He already sold fifty thousand. He's going to hundred for sure. Crazy. Yeah. So uh, and I'm on tour as well. Check that out. PantalsComedy.com. Thank you all and go fuck yourself. Oh, hey, one more thing. Oh, gonna. Uh, Tuesday, next Tuesday, Bordell. Oh, shit. When this comes out, I don't know when it comes out, but uh, we're going to start doing once a month, Bordell, live two drink minimum, and then uh, stand-up comedy show like we used to at the Bordell. Yep. So we did it that one time, and it was a success. People loved it. So again, we're doing that. Live two drink minimum, so followed fun. by stand-up comedy. Hell yeah, dude.